You know, one of the prayers that I've encouraged you all to pray at uh, beginning of this year is the prayer of Ephesians 1, where it says that God will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him, the eyes of your understanding being flooded with light, being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling. What is the hope of His calling? His purpose for your life. You are born with a destiny. There's a purpose for which no one else can fulfill but you. And if someone doesn't fulfill his purpose, it is a loss. It is a loss to heaven. Heaven doesn't just say, you know what? You know, it's just one loss. No, no, no. For, for the Lord, out of a hundred sheep, one sheep is lost. He considered a loss and he will seek for it. I love this, until he finds it. Hallelujah. That's how God esteems. So it's a real loss to heaven if you don't fulfill that purpose. So God has a purpose for you and, and that purpose wasn't something God decided later on as you observe your obedience or your lack of it, then He gives you a purpose. No, no. That purpose is from your mother's womb. When you were there, when God placed you there, you were given a purpose, a destiny, if you would. Amen. For your life. Now watch this. And we know. Do you know it? Do you know it? Not just a theory in your head. Not, I, I hope to know it. I hope to believe it. But we know that all things work together for good. Say for good. Say it three times. For good. For good. Amen. Say for my good. For my good. Hallelujah. Say for my family's good. Amen. So God is working everything, even though He's not behind everything, especially when they're bad stuff. Amen. God is a good God. But He's working all things for your good. Amen. And then He goes on to say, for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose. Now, some people jump on this and say, notice, it's only for those who love God. No, friend, all those who are born again, they love God. And all of us love God the moment we know Him because all our sins are forgiven. In the New Covenant, it says, all of us know Him from the least to the greatest. We all love Him, although our love is at varying degrees. God does not say, when your love is 80% uh, there for me, then this promise will work for you. No, no, no. It's saying every believer, those who love God, is a characteristic of people who are born again, people who have eternal life, people who are safe and redeemed by the work of Jesus. All things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. And the next verse tells us the purpose. For whom He foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, Jesus, that He might be the, that Jesus might be the firstborn among many brethren. Notice the purpose is tied up with what God foreknew. It is tied up with the predestination to be conformed to the image of Jesus. And, and what it means is this. Some people, uh, you know, they teach uh, f uh, foreknowledge and predestination. These are big words, I know. Maybe for some of you, you're not interested in these things, but there are a lot of believers who ask me also, what do you think about predestination? What do you think about foreknowledge? So I think it's a good time for me just to share with you, all right, what it means um, in, a, in a simple way. So foreknowledge is actually prognosis. It's for before knowledge of the future. You know it before. So God, of course, has the foreknowledge. But so that's foreknowledge. Predestined means God has destined you by, I'm going to say by hook or by crook, but you know, the ways of God is by straight and by straight. <laughs> you end up by the, with the good intent that He has for your life. So, but some people have thought predestination in such a way that they say you are either predestined to be saved or you are predestined to be lost. Now, I don't believe that. I don't believe the Scriptures bear that out. I believe that God foreknew that you will accept Jesus Christ. He foreknew. Now, God did not manipulate your free choice. He gave you the free choice. If God had manipulated your free choice, He would have done it with the first man and woman, Adam and Eve in the garden. When Adam is about to partake of that tree that he's not supposed to, God can stop his hand, right? Make it into a, a little uh, uh, flat um, hand that will go a great velocity across his own face and slap him. Amen? Slap him three times if God wants. God manipulated His free choice. No, God did not manipulate His free choice, my friend. If God had done, God could have done that. God could have made Adam kick himself even. But God did not stop Adam from partaking of the very tree that He knew was going to bring death to man. So, God will not manipulate your free choice. But God foreknew 
that you by your choice would accept the Lord Jesus Christ. God foreknew that long before you were born, God foreknew in that, in that timeless eternity, God foreknew that you would come forth into this world. God foreknew that what you would choose even before you have chosen this. That's why He's God. You know, the Apostle Paul says it like this, God separated me in my mother's womb. God separated me in my mother's womb. But we all know that he grew up and uh, became a Pharisee of Pharisees, sat at the feet of Gamaliel, and uh, he was instrumental in many believers being tortured, being persecuted, and even was there uh, giving his um, tacit approval to the stoning of Stephen, the first martyr of the church in the book of Acts. We saw that. And, and yet, you know, it was misdirected, but he was separated from his, in his mother's womb, separated to the calling in his mother's womb. What does it mean then, Pastor Prince? Does that mean that God has predestined some people to be saved and some not to be saved from their mother's womb? No, my friend, it's not saying that. What it's saying when God separated him, that means God uh, separated him to become a Jew, not another race, but a Jew in that day and age. They will have the accurate knowledge from the Scriptures. God caused him to be sitting at the feet of Gamaliel, one of the best Bible teachers of that day. Uh, you know, he was a Pharisee, but one of the best teachers of the Bible. He was privileged to sit at the feet of Gamaliel. Not only that, he knew the Bible and he knew Greek and he knew Hebrew back to back. He knew Aramaic and uh, he was an intelligent man. God allowed him to have all the, 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 the teaching that he would have, all that. Okay, so that he, he's prepared not to rely on these things because later on he considers all these things as dung, right? But to prepare him to see that all these things cannot achieve that greatest revelation. When the truth comes, you know it. Praise God. The things you've been looking for in your hedonistic pursuit of pleasure or, or fulfillment uh, through wealth accumulation, all those things, when you find that you have those things, it doesn't mean much. When you have little, it means a lot to have things, right? But when you have a lot, as testified by those people who have a lot, even billions, all of a sudden, it doesn't mean much. It is so true that you were created for greater things. Your heart is too big to be satisfied by wealth, fame, by, by pleasures of sin, right? Your, your heart is too big. It can only be filled with divine things because you were, you were breathed in your, your real person, the Spirit, was breathed in into your body by God Himself. Amen. You are a spirit being. Amen. Things that are of the flesh, material things, can never truly satisfy you the way the Lord Jesus can. That's why He's called the bread of life. Hallelujah. So before you have chosen to accept Christ or to believe on Christ, God foreknew that you would do that. And those whom He foreknew would believe on Christ he predestined this, not others, to go to hell. No, He predestined those who would believe on Christ, whom He foreknew would accept Christ. He predestined them to end up conformed to the image of His Son, the Son that He loved, that He loved dearly. Amen. When you look at Jesus, how beautiful He is, isn't He? When you look at His uh, moral beauty, his moral glory. You look at Him, His eyes full of love for sinners. He sees things that others don't. You know, He sees beauty where others see ugliness. He sees uh, the, the cry in, in a sinner's heart, whereas others see the filth and the sin and the uncleanness. Jesus would welcome you with open arms because He loves you and He sees you as His sheep. Hallelujah. He loves you. He loved you long before you know Him. So God, God's purpose is that everyone that will believe in Jesus, whom He foreknew would believe on Christ, He predestined every one of them, those believers, to end up being conformed to the image of Jesus. So everything in your life, good things, bad things, amen, small things, big things, whatever it is, all that is happening in your life is so that you're, you're, it's all predestined. You are predestined. No, those things are not predestined, but you are predestined. Those things are are working towards the predestination for you to end up just like Jesus. You will end up looking like Jesus. You'll be conformed to the image of 
Jesus. And my friend, I'll tell you this, Jesus is no failure. Everything He touched prospers. He touched the leper, ugliness becomes beauty. He gives garments of beauty for the ashes of the leper. When, when there, there's little in His hands, He touches the five loaves and two small fish and they become plenty to feed the hungry. Hallelujah. He touches the poor and the poor becomes rich. He touches the sick and the sick body becomes healthy. Not just healthy, vibrant with health, with the energy to serve Him with. Just like Peter's mother rose from her sick bed to serve them. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, friend, whatever Jesus touches, prospers. And to be conformed to the image of Jesus with His character, His beautiful person. Hallelujah. And to have the results that He has. Hallelujah. That itself is true success. How